Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems. Hey, I'm Tom Gozi. Welcome to Hot and Cold. You may not have noticed it, but this week we're putting down granite tile in the kitchen and there's a lot of stuff to look at, so stay with us. We're going to have a fun show this week and we're actually getting stuff done. We always get stuff done, don't we? But we're even getting more done. Big areas this week. Well, you can see we're, we've, we've got a lot of tile down already and what I've done is I've taken the liberty of putting down the easy stuff. And what the easy stuff was, was most of the tile I did not have to cut. So what I've done is we're in the kitchen area and you can see it's, it's fairly well covered at this point. Um, I snapped chalk lines. You know what? The walls are kind of parallel, which is a good thing. So <clears throat> what I did was... Um, I started out with full tiles over here and I worked my way in this direction where the kitchen cabinets are going to be and you can see here I've stopped short of the wall because this will be underneath the sink right here will be underneath a, a cat there'll be a cabinet here we do have to put a couple pieces in here because there's areas the cabinets cover we don't necessarily have to tile and yeah you know you say Tom but boy you're being cheap about tile because what if somebody takes the cabinets up well, the issue is this. If we put tile all the way to the wall, we want to put penetrations in the floor for plumbing or whatever, drilling through granite tile ain't fun. So we leave the granite tile away. And that's exactly what I've done over here. We've got a laundry sink that's going to go here and it'll be enclosed with a sink base. And I left that one tile out so we can put all our plumbing in. We will not see that and that will be wonderful. So what I've done is to uh, do this, I've snapped a chalk line down and measured off and and this worked out almost exactly right where I started with full 12 inch tiles going in this direction got over to this side and had to do some cutting as you can see I've got some cut pieces I set this morning I'm going to show you what we're up to here now we've got this uh, doorway um, we've got to put a tile in here when the tile has to be cut but we have because Mr. Mr. Uh, anxious here wants to get stuff done I put some trim up on the wall and on the door here. The door is out because it has to be trimmed on the bottom a little because of the tile. So what I've done is I've got a, um, I've got a, I'm going to cut the trim back. There's two ways to deal with trim. When you get up to something like this here, one is you can cut the tile to fit around the wood trim, but you know what? It's easier to cut the wood than it is to cut the tile. And if you, and I had to do it upstairs because there was old trim in place and we've got mortar, uh, excuse me, grout all around this area. It's not that ugly, but the, I think this is a cleaner look where we have just the wood going right down to the tile. So what I've done is I've already started it. I'm just about done. I am done. <laughs> I use my undercut saw and, and this has a, a, see that little bit of an angle there, how it juts down? That allows me to take a spacer, in this case a piece of tile, put it here and just undercut that. And now look at that, the tile will go right underneath. So, so that's ready to go and we take that piece, we throw it away. The catch is right here, I'm going to step down into the stairs so we can look. Um, right here we have a tile, I've cut it to the width of the, of the space here, but we also have to notch it for the, um, to go around this. So what I do is I, I don't measure a lot, I mean I don't measure with the tape measure, I do, but I try not to. It's much because there's always the human factor of making a mistake. And I transpose numbers endlessly. So what I do is I take the piece of tile 
and I hold it up here like this, and I put a mark on the edge here where this is. I, I've got a space here for the grout, and I mark it here, give myself a little bit of wiggle room. And I do the same thing here where I set it about where I want it to be, and I'll mark that end by going in like that. So I mark those two edges here and here, and then look what the elves did. <laughs> they squared it up. So now we need to go over to our, um, our wet saw. Remember the wet saw? You haven't seen me use the wet saw yet. I love the wet saw. The wet saw is the best thing since sliced bread. You gotta have one when you're doing this kind of work. Well, you know, I, I'm, I'm so excited. I'm jumping into this so quickly. This is our Home Depot granite tile that is $2.97 for one square foot. And this is the best deal ever. And I just love the stuff. We've still got, we got a fair bit of it still left here. It comes in a five square foot box. There's five pieces in a box. And it's amazing to me, I, I have yet to get a box with a broken tile. So that's a good thing. This is my wet saw, the tile saw. Um, they sell them now for 88 bucks. I bought this one, it cost me 99. I thought it was a good deal and it is. It's even a better deal at 88. I have to dust it off every so often because dried granite droppings get all over everything. It's a very simple saw. There's a little tray in the bottom here if I could pull it out. See the water in there? Swirling around with granite dust mixed in. The blade just goes down into the, into the water. It's a diamond blade and just picks up water and spews water. I don't know if you noticed last week, I didn't point it out, but we were doing the window sills. It had water sprayed all over me. This is why I had to wet my pants. I, I just, the cameraman was very upset with me. I said, we're doing the show anyway because we're troopers. Um, so you'll see in a minute here how wet I get. Uh, I don't mind doing that because doing, cutting this tile, there's no other way to cut this tile. This is, I, I, the more expensive saws probably work better in terms of not throwing water on you, but I'm not sure about that. For 88 bucks, I'll get wet. Um, so what we've got to do is we've got to cut this piece out. And it's very simple. We turn the saw on. It does have uh, markings here. I think, I don't even remember if it comes with a fence. I'm not sure that it does. If it does, I lost it. So I use some clamps when I need to. And I clamp a piece of wood on for a fence. But I usually like to do it by eye. So um, this is what I do. I turn it on. You see the water spewing out. Now I cut, I'm cutting from the back side because the front is, the front side is polished so it's not easy to uh, mark it. It's easy to mark the back side so I cut it. I don't go all the way in because the saw blade, see how close it is on the top there? It's almost, if I went all the way to where it came together I would overcut it. So what I do, I flip it over and cut both sides. Now, if you have never done tile before, you don't know how great this is. And if you have done tile before, you know how absolutely phenomenal that is. Granite is really hard stuff. And I just cut that in not even a minute's time talking, doing a TV show. So is that a good thing? Um, so we've got that cut now. What I try to do is pre-cut the tile and then we need to go mix up some thin set mortar which we're going to do next. So we're going to take this over and we're going to get the mortar out. Time for a break? It, isn't, it is time for a break. Let's get it right. Okay, well I'll tell you what, we're going to mix the mortar when we come back from the commercial. So stay with us, we'll be right back. We're going to mix mortar. Isn't that fun? It's just like making brownies. So we're going to mix some mortar now, some thin set mortar, and first thing we do is we have the mortar bucket, which is just a five gallon bucket. I'm going to pour some water into it, and, and I always get confused in terms of putting the right amount of water in with the right amount of thin set, but you put, the idea is we pour the thin set into the water and it helps to not be as dusty. We've got a bag of thin set here, this is for marble and granite. Um, although I think most thin sets work, but if you read the label, it tells you what, what particular materials it's good for. I always mix too much mortar. It's just occupational hazard that I do. Well, you can get a, a mixer, and I've got one, a stirrer, that you can put in 
uh, put on a drill. I like to use this stick. This is the mortar stirring stick because it's much simpler to clean. And I do this. I just kind of swish it around and, and we want the we want sort of a cake batter t um, peanut buttery uh, texture to it. Um, if I was doing really big batches I would use the mixer but I usually do small enough batches that the stick works real well. You don't want to have any dry stuff stuck in the bottom so you Good workout too. Did I just hit the camera? Yes, I did, didn't I? Watch out for my stick. And we just stir that up. That's about ready. Now, you don't take the mortar and use it right away. You got to let it slack off. I'm not sure what slack off means except uh, in the uh, traditional colloquial context. So we're going to let that sit for uh, 10 minutes and it will um, kind of start to get cementy. That's what it's going to do. Uh, actually, I realized that where the mortar is slacking off is where we have to go next. And this is the entryway. We've done all the rest. And, <clears throat> you know, what's great about it is there's not been a lot of cutting here, so that's made the whole job go very quickly because I was just laying out a broad area of, um, of tile it, with minimal cuts. The cuts are all on one side. Now, you need to measure out the room ahead of time because you don't want to have a really big piece on one side and a really skinny piece on the other side. If you can balance maybe with a half or, or, or several inches where these are 12-inch tiles, get some kind of balance. This worked out well for us because even here, where we're back in, in, in this hallway area, we've got a full tile here, and now we've got about seven inches here. That's a good, good place to be. We just don't want to have a little skinny piece here that sticks out by that might break um, or be, uh, might not be as sightly. Uh, sounds like I know what I'm talking about. I've done enough tiling over the years that uh, um, I'm learning. <laughs> Now, we're, so we've, we've gone from a big area where the kitchen is, come into sort of a hallway, and we widen out again here where the stairs are and the buckets and everything. And there's a trick here that where we have tile, we have straight lines, and we don't want to have the line kind of going like this because it throws everything off. So even though this is a very small area, we want to get some lines to mark where we are so we know. So I always start out with a frame or square, and uh, I put this down here and I will mark there's enough lines on this floor from all kinds of stuff that uh, put that there then I'll take my straight edge which is also known as my level it multitasks and uh, we're gonna line that up to the line I just did and that looks pretty good and we'll go right to the door okay so that's the line for this now we do know we have to be, uh, these are 12 inch tiles, so if we come over off that line again, I just, there's the line, kind of got hidden. And I'm going to come over 12 and a quarter, which is going to get me beyond the edge of the tile so I can see where I am. And we're going to do a line perpendicular. And we'll see how close we are to this when the time comes. <coughs> and uh, let me get my tape measure out of my pocket. I have tape measures scattered all about, but let's take this one and we're going to measure here. We should be 12 and a quarter, 12 and a quarter. Okay, so this is parallel with the edge here. So that's good. And then we'll, um, if you can't do this and be cluttered, it is no fun, is it? So we'll put the, um, again, put the straight edge on the perpendicular line, hold that and do this. And we'll go over here. And then we'll put another one here. We'll just extend it right over to the wall. And we'll be pretty well. You know, some people actually, when they do TV shows, they prepare for this sort of thing. But I am just so excited. And, and I'm going to show you the way I really do it. I usually clutter myself like this. Because 
I'm not ready. I'm not going to lay this. When I go to lay this, I'm going to move everything out of the corner. But while I'm waiting for the mortar, I could do that. Now, now that I mark some lines, I have a sense where we're going. I can. Uh, what I'll do is I'll cut a tile for here. We'll put full ones all the way across here, and then we'll cut in where we go up against the stairs, and that'll be about a six, five, six, five and a half inch piece that goes across there. And then we can work this way. But the catch, the catch is, you don't want to paint yourself into a corner here. Now, if I start working this way, I'm going to be stuck in the corner. And I got to take giant steps over to here. So what I'm going to do for today, and I think we'll <clears throat> probably get some of this done on the show with the mortar I have, we'll do, say, two wide here down to here, maybe three. Just leave us enough room so we can get out the door. We'll let that cure. This stuff has to set 24 hours to, uh, to stiffen up and bond and, and so you can have light traffic on it. And then we can do the rest. And that's essentially what I did yesterday. We did um, you know, the lion's share of this uh, big area with the, um, with the uh, big pieces of tile. Uh, I fit in some of the cut pieces here, like this edge here. And then we just came back this morning before the cameraman came, and I, I just fit some of these in. So it doesn't take very long to, um, to go back and cut, especially with this saw. So I tell you what, we're going to take a quick break, and it'll be about two more minutes. The mortar will be slacked off, and I'll stop slacking off, and we'll start putting some more tile down. The mortaring is the best part anyway. <laughs> You're probably wondering what the vacuum was for. This is the ladybug vacuum with the special ladybug catching nozzle. But I brought it down here just because it's easy to move around while we're tiling. Obviously, I wanted to catch, pick up all the sawdust I just created. I take my slack, slacked off mortar. I clean off the slacked off mortar from the mortar stick. And like I say, this is, I think is a lot easier to clean off than the uh, uh, then there's a ladybug in there. <laughs> then the uh, uh, mixer. Now we're just going to put some mortar down here. Oh, oh, very important point. I know the people at Home Depot who sell tile are going to want me to say this. I am sticking this tile right down over Advantech subflooring. Now they prefer to have it go over the cement board, wonder board, they, a lot of different names for it. Um, I didn't want to go the extra thickness nor the uh, expense and I don't like working with the stuff. And Advantech, you can, you know, they, they do say you can put it down over plywood. Um, Advantech is, is somewhere in between the two of plywood and OSB. You do not put this down over OSB. Advantech is a more, much more water resistant oriented strand board, so I use it. I don't know what the warranty is. I don't think the warranty is the same if there is a warranty, but I use it. I've had no problems with it. I've used it before and I continue to use it. Just so you know though, it's one of those ghosty things. <laughs> um, so we've got the nice notch cut out here. I put the mortar down. We're using a quarter inch trowel, you know, quarter inch tooth trowel there, and I just kind of put it around where it should be. And what we'll do is kind of sneak this in. Oh, that's like butter, isn't it? And what we do is we have eighth inch spacers. We're using an eighth inch mortar uh, grout line here. And we kind of work this down, pull that in nice and taut or snug. And uh, now I've got one little piece to go here under the stair and I'm, let's get the, here we go. I've also trimmed this uh, stop for the door back and uh, you can't, I don't think you can see it, but one edge has what we call a chamfer, which is a cut an angled edge. And of course the edge I cut is not chamfered. So we always put the chamfered edges together, the, the finished edge on the tile, if we want to call it that, like so. And the cut edge faces in away 
you know, to the open area. And we're going to put some spacers just because we got them right here. And you don't have to leave them once they're set. I've been leaving them today because I've got people here in the building with me who don't know where I've put, put new tile and, and you're not supposed to walk on this for 24 hours. So I'm leaving them, <laughs> I'm leaving them here so folks know not to step there. Now if we swing around, I'm going to actually, I'm going to steal a couple of these spacers because you can pull them out as soon as you're done uh, if you don't have, if you're not using them for some kind of marker. I'm going to go around because I have way more, uh, way more mortar than I need. I'm going to put this over here. And we've got a couple of, a couple of um, tile to put down here. So we moved over to the other side of the kitchen. And we're doing, uh, this area here is, is not a big area, but it's under the cabinet. Now, I always make this mistake, and I was, <laughs> you make them enough and you eventually remember them, right? Kitchen cabinet is two feet wide, right? But there's that little kick space down at the bottom, so we have to have about 18 inches off. The, we, we can come off about 18, it comes out to about 18 and a half if you measure the toe space. So what we've done is um, we're going to put a full tile here, and then we'll have 12 inches. We have plenty to play with. Um, and what we're going to do when we actually set the cabinets is all these little pieces of scrap I have we'll use as spacers on the back corners of the cabinets to keep them in the same plane so the cabinet will be level, otherwise it's going to be going downhill. So we're going to drop in some full tiles now. And kind of whittle that a little bit, bed it in. And then again we get our spacers in place. And we'll do the next one. Same deal. And I've got more spacers right here that I stole a minute ago. Just drop them in. Isn't this easy? I mean, I love doing it. It's, with, with the saw, it just transforms the whole experience. Because before, when you used to use the, uh, the old-fashioned cutters, the, um, you, you'd always would ruin tile. I don't ruin any pieces anymore unless I mismeasure them, which is just stupidity on my part. And, I come to appreciate that as part of the, but I don't even do that because I, I feel so much more confident using that cutter. Now <clears throat> we have to, um, coming off this other wall, again we got to be in about 18 inches and we're 18 inches is right here so we're just going to allow for some extra overlap. I'm just using scrap pieces. You know I've got those pieces I cut where I, they were seven or so and I'm just using these scraps. You always save the scraps, right? I'm going to steal it. Space it from here, and a space it from here. Just pull that in snug, and that's done. So let's do this now. We can go down to the other end of the kitchen again, because we're just doing mop-up stuff here, and it doesn't take long to, oh, before we do that, I, because we're talking tile. Remember last week? Was it last week? I think it was. I was showing you the tile on the windowsill. Well, here's the finished windowsill, except for the grout. I haven't grouted it yet. But we put the, uh, we put pine trim on. I've got this pine nosing and we'll grout into here and I think that that looks kind of slick. I love the I love pine. It's so easy to work with. It gives you such nice results. So we're back down the other end again and I took the liberty through the magic of television to cut some tile and we're going to set these suckers right in. We need it to do about eight inches. Um, one thing I should point out here is uh, we're leaving a, the, you know, the, we don't have to be extremely accurate. We need to be close, but we can, we got some wiggle room on uh, how we cut tile when it's up against a wall like this because we're going to put a baseboard over that. So that is extremely forgiving of screw ups with the tile saw. It was extremely important, I think, when you were not using a tile saw, when you were using the old fashioned hand cutters, but I think with the tile saw, I really can't emphasize enough the value of the tile saw to anybody. You don't see many professionals working without tile saws these days. Okay, so I'm, I'm comparing now. I'm making sure that I'm in the right relation with the lines that I just put down. And this one is about a quarter inch off here, and I'm parallel with it. This one I'm right on the mark. 
and I also am sighting down the rest of the kitchen to make sure I'm in I'm in the uh, right um, view here and uh, I'm only going to go this far. I'm not going to go right up to the door because I have to deal with the ice and the water shield and we don't want to try bonding the bath. So we're going to clean that up and muddle our way through. So we'll put this last cut one here and make sure we put the right edge out. And again, you can see that gap. As long as the gap is less than three quarters of an inch, I'm happy as a clam because um, I've got three quarter inch trim that's going to cover that hole. So we're in great shape. All I've got is, uh, I've got two more pieces to put here. I'm going to put two full ones down, being as I'm here and I have excess mortar anyway. And uh, you know what, we're just about out of time. Um, we still have to grout, but that's next week. We have to, I like to let stuff cure anyway. And I'm not going to put the grout down until I finish this area, and I'll do this, the balance of this, in another day. So, I hope I've given you some idea. This is one of the prettier tiles I've seen, comparable with stuff that costs two to three times as much, I think. $2.97 at Home Depot. Can't beat that with a stick. Of course, there's folks there who will answer your questions. They've answered my questions. And uh, you can't beat that with a stick either. You can be, beat me with a stick because we got to go. See you next week. If you have any questions, give us a call on the radio. You'll see where at the end of the show. And that's about it. Production support for Hot and Cold is brought to you by American Solar Technics, manufacturers of components for wood burning and solar heating systems.